I, I think there's going to be a lot of cross training, right? Yeah. So today there's a pretty, even though you'll see um, technology starting to bridge uh, roles, you're going to, if you're like a BI analyst and uh, maybe you got some SQL skills, you're not right now ready to step in and play the role of data scientist. And frankly, uh, interestingly enough, a lot of data scientists aren't very good with SQL, right? Um, they, you know, it's happy with Python, uh, doing a lot of, you know, data munching through scripts, you know, uh, and then kicking off, you know, a lot of API driven work from a modeling perspective. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot more cross pollination there. Um, so skill set wise, I think there's going to be an evolution, and I think in both directions. That doesn't mean you won't have especially data scientists or you won't, you know, all business or business analysts are going to be data scientists. I think that's probably never going to happen. Uh, but I think you are going to see a lot more cross pollination there, um, and it kind of maybe even an evolution into a new role. You know, today today a lot of times what I'll see is there's a business analyst group. They've got a um, they they've got a, a they've got a guy or, or a woman on the team who's out there kind of doing stuff with data science, right? Uh, but they tend to be an outlier. Um, I think you'll see a, like in a Venn diagram, you'll see more overlap occurring between those worlds, which will also drive the technologies together, especially at a platform level. I know we're we're investing a lot in that direction uh, from a, the data science uh, cloud service and all the machinery around that, um, kind of being seamlessly integrated with our uh, analytics portfolio. And uh, I imagine uh, other vendors uh, will will move in the same direction. I think the um, the other thing that's interesting is software developers. You know, we we definitely believe that if you look out, say, five years, um, that machine learning algorithms and model, machine learning models, tra- trained algorithms, will um, wind up um, driving quite a bit of application logic. Um, we're already doing that in our packaged apps. So we deliver, you know, on, um, you know uh, HR applications or... Salesforce uh, management applications or customer relationship management. We, we're doing a lot behind the scenes uh, with machine learning now, so a customer can take that and they can they can benefit from it. Uh, but I think you know the in the enterprise, a lot of bespoke applications will be running models behind the scenes. So today, that's uh, you know kind of a mess, right? How do you bring those worlds together? Because they have very different life cycle, it's very different disciplines. Um, I think you're going to see an evolution where there's quite a bit more intersection between what happens at the level of application development and then also in, in data science. Um, now, partially, I think the problem is going to be facilitated or solved um, by frameworks at, at the uh, infrastructure level. So I can put a model on the production. I can allow that model to be you know, monitored and I can detect when it, you know, it's predictive efficacy is declining or it's, you know, it's recommendations are going south. The people responsible for the machine learning infrastructure may reconstitute automatically republish it in a way that's transparent uh, to the application. But that's kind of like a new paradigm for most application developers. So, you know, they're going to have to think about the way this impacts the entire life cycle and design of their application. And also, frankly, how they can tell if things go wrong with the models, because we can't always rely on the data science team or, or machine learning ops team um, to pick up when when there's uh, you know changes in a model or changes in the data set that may be influencing the application in the wrong way. So I think those two worlds will come together as well. Um, again, not total overlap. We're not going to have, you know, your average application developer is not going to turn into a data scientist anytime soon, uh, nor should they, right? But you're definitely going to see a convergence here, and there'll be people who whose careers are formed and live in the middle of that convergence. Mm. Thank you so much for checking out this clip from the Data Talk podcast. To watch the full episode, you can either go to the Experian blog. The URL is experian.com slash datatalk, or you can click on the link, which is found in the description of this video.